the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. During this past week, God has uh, given us a theme uh, to think about and to meditate about in the passions of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the bridegroom. He is the bridegroom coming and loving his bride, which is the church, which is us, which is me and you, every and each one of us. And uh, God wanted us to understand his love in a, in, a, in a new way. Every day his love is new, every day deeper. As St. Paul said, that God may grant you to understand that the, the width and the depth and the width of the love of Christ, the heights and the depth and the width and the length, and to understand the love of Christ that surpasses all understanding. And I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that the love of Christ is an ocean, and we are still on the shore of this ocean. We haven't even stepped in that ocean. And I'll tell you why. Because if we step into this ocean, we would become the ocean ourselves. We would mix, we would melt into the same love, and we would give this love to others, the same love that we receive. It's an ocean. But we are still on the shore of this ocean. And I was thinking, you know, why the love of the bridegroom is not understood as, as it should. Because the word love and the love of Christ became very, even the word love became very cheap. Very, very, very cheap. And uh, without pointing fingers on anyone, uh, the love in every household between the house and the wife is lacking. Right? The perfect love, according to Ephesians 5, is lacking. I'm not talking about loving the enemies. I'm talking about loving the good enemies. <laughs> <laughs> and if it's lacking there, it will be lacking with the children, lacking in the church, lacking in everywhere. And that's what St. Paul said in Ephesians 5 when he spoke about that. But let's pray today that we get a little bit deeper into that ocean of love that the bridegroom is coming to give us. The bridegroom today is saying, I'm coming to pay for your price has a name in Arabic. I don't know what's the name in English. It's called Mahr. It's called Mahr. Dauri. Okay. I'm a Muslim. I don't know what So he came to pay the price and to tell the bride not only that you are loved, but you are cherished, you are very, very valuable. And your price now is my life. Your, your worth now is my life. Your worth is my life. Your worth is my blood. You're not worthless. You're very valuable. Why? I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything good. It's not about doing, it's about your value. I chose you, I said I'm going to marry you, and now I'm paying the price, and the price is my blood. And if, if I, if I want to talk a little bit about the price that Jesus paid, it's huge. It's a huge. It's not just the blood. It's not just the blood, but way more than this. It's not just his life. But the humiliation that he received as a Middle Eastern man is huge. I was telling people, this is something 
that you won't understand in a Western culture. But in the Middle Eastern culture, if you want to beat me to death, take me in a room, do that, and that's fine. But you do that in front of people, that's tough. Especially if you do it in front of my own family. The worst humiliation. To strip him naked like this. To, to, uh, you know, to curse him. Spit on him. And, and, and all the things. And not only that these things they did to him. He foreknew every and each one of them. And I will be very surprised. If I know that he did not choose each and every one of them specifically, picked up. This is the last, the menu that I'm going to receive on my sufferings. I want to tell my bride how much she is worth. How much she is loved. Not because of anything good she did, but because of who she is. St. Paul said that God has demonstrated his love for us. While we are still sinners, Jesus died for us. He died for the sinners. That those who live should no longer them live for themselves, but live for their bridegroom, for him who died for them and rose again. That's what the Bible says. Wanted to pay this huge price and say, you are my bride. I want to marry you. I love you. And I love you, not any kind of love, but I love you, the Agabi love, or Agabi love. What is the Agabi love? Agabi is a, is a Greek word. A Greek word means love. Problem is the word love is translated into different things. In, in Arabic and in English, it's one word, love. But in Greek, many words for love. One of them is Arabi. One of them is Eros. And another one is Philo. And we mix all these kind of love. But we want to understand now what is our bridegroom paying for us? He's paying for, he's loving us the agape love. What is the agape love? This new word that was introduced in the New Testament. It was introduced first in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Love the world, he used the word agape. What is the agape? Agape is the sacrificial love until the point of death. Sacrificial love until the point of death. St. Paul says it in Ephesians 5 when he talks about marriage. And when he talks about marriage, you don't know if he's talking about marriage, man and woman, or he's talking about Christ and the church. He says, husbands, Love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. The agape love. Agape love is to the point of death. And because it's the point of death, it's unlimited, it's huge, it's an ocean. When? Have you ever experienced someone dying for you? Or willing to die for you? It's unbelievable. And not only that. If this person is a royal person, is, 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 is a great person, and I'm no one. Not only that. If this person is the one who's giving me everything, and I'm the one who's betraying him every day. Who would do that? Who would love this kind of agape love? Not understood at all. It's not in our dictionary. That's why when we talk about the love of Christ, yeah, the love of Christ, it's nice. 
And then sometimes, if God really loves me, why didn't He do this and that for me? Why didn't He give me certain things? Why didn't He take away some pain that I have? Why didn't He do one, two, three for me? And I want to tell you that all of us, because of the lack of understanding of the agape love, deep down in our hearts, we don't really believe the love of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We don't know the love of the Trinity. And we don't go into the circle of love. We doubt. I say, yes, I know. But deep down in my heart, no. Everything in me doubts that. Because there is no way that some would taste the agape love and not willing to give up his life. Impossible. Impossible. If anyone would receive that love, would be dying to give this love again. No wonder the martyrs, not only they, uh, they were uh, uh, killed for Christ's sake, but some of them offered themselves they wanted to see where is martyrdom and they wanted to go there. Why? He said, because we love him. Okay, go serve. Go um, give. Do something about it. No, 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 no. He said, he loved us. He, God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, God of the universe loved me and gave up his son for me. He said, you are my son and your price and your life is equal my son. And he stamped that with precious blood. You don't want me to give my blood that's worth nothing? No. What happened? What is the gap between the age of martyrdom and the martyrs and us, what happened? Now, we doubt, we doubt God's love, I promise you. I promise you, and I'm the first one. We doubt God's love for us. Why? Because of silly things of this life. He didn't let me pass this class. He didn't give me that degree. He didn't give me this or that. And he didn't give me as he gave people. It's all materialistic. It's like little kids who are saying, because my parents are not giving me the candies, they don't love me. I need to get out of this house. <laughs> Angels are laughing at us like this. Seriously? You don't know your worth? You go, like, sell yourself to think in, this, in these worlds? You dedicate your life, your... You know how valuable your time is? You know how valuable your time is? This is the time of God because you are united with the Trinity. You are part of this ocean as deep as that. Again, where is the disconnection? Where, where have we fallen? What happened? What happened is what happens in every single generation. And what happened in the first century till now is refusing the message of the cross. Refusing the message of the cross. What does that mean? Love equals cross and cross equals love. If I know that my father loves me, then every single pain that he puts in my life, it's weighed by the ounce. It's weighed very, very, very well. Not extra, not more, not less, for exactly what I need. 
When Jesus loved us, He said, the way I transfer this love to you is through suffering and through death and the death of the cross. Because Adam and Eve were kicked out of paradise because of their pride. And I'm coming to humble myself. And if you follow these footsteps, if you follow this example, you will reach that love. But we separated God and His love and the spirituality from what's happening in our daily life. It's a big disconnection that the devil actually has given us. So the pain and suffering and the problems and the things that are going in my life, and, and not just the pain. You know, I want to give marriage as an example. A lot of times it's, it's, it's a pain now. But it's not meant to be. Why? Because the, the, the most important element, the cross, is missed in that. Jesus loved. He died on a cross. And he's saying, husbands, in order to love your own wives, you need to be able to give up yourself for her. But that's too much. Great. Excellent. That's where we start. Start is, I love myself more than everyone around me. Even the closest people to me. Can you believe that? This is a reality, my friends. This is a reality. I love myself more than everyone around me, including the closest people to me. And when I love them, sometimes I show it, you know, through control, through, you know, I want to take pride in my family and, and stuff like this, and I control them. And when, when, when you say, what are you controlling? Say, this is love. This is not love. Love is giving, is humbling, is sacrificing, the same way that Jesus did on the cross. But if I can't, then I run to him, and I run to him, his cross and say, Lord, save me, because... I'm dying. The reason why I love myself is because I don't believe that he loves me. If I don't protect myself, he's not going to protect me. And people will attack me and I will be disrespected at home and I won't, you know, I will lose all my rights. Where is God who loves you and who put you in that situation? But he wanted you to get out of yourself in order to taste such love. This love, my friends, is a spiritual love. It's not the love that makes people happy, but the love that makes people holy. And that's exactly what St. Paul says it in Ephesians chapter 5. He said that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. He wanted to present her a perfect wife, but in order to be perfect, she needs that cross. There was a reading today in Jeremiah. Jeremiah was complaining to God, saying, I wanted to do great things, and I wanted to serve you, but the people are not giving me a chance. This is a horrible service. I remember this reading a lot. It's a favorite to me. <laughs> what is that? And God told Jeremiah, man up. Man up. If you can't walk with those, with the soldiers who are walking, how will you fight those who are riding on horses? Man up. Grow up. Forget about yourself. Put that on the cross. And then you will understand the meaning of love that was completely lost. I know that it's hard for me and you to see it because where are these models? 
Where are the people who are dying for others or dying for God or His name? I know that these models are rare these days, but it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It doesn't mean that this blood was not real. It doesn't mean that this love, you know, was not, was, was not present, is not strong, is not a saving blood till now. But this blood is crying out, my bride, come and join me. Humble yourself and join me on that cross. Humble yourself. Break yourself for me and you will understand my love. Very strange verse that Jesus said. Come to me, all you weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Okay, great. This is my favorite verse in the Bible. No, no, no. Complete the rest, and it won't be your favorite verse. Take my yoke upon you. What? Yoke is something very, very heavy. It's, it's like what um, uh, threshes like the... the, uh, the, the that used like the oxen, they used two oxen to, to do that and to, to prepare the land and to dig the ground very, very heavy and they, they pick like the heaviest and the strongest animals to do that and not a single animal, two. Two, they carry one thing like a T. One on this side, one on this side and pull. And Jesus said, come to me all you weary and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Okay, open the door. Where's that carpet? He said, the tea? I'm here. You're there. Carry my burden. What? Carry my burden. It doesn't make sense. Yes. And the cross doesn't make sense. Foolishness to those who are perishing. But those who are being saved, it is the power of God. Take my yoke upon me. Uh, take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Ill confusion. This is schizophrenia. Burden and easy. How is it burden and how is it easy? Because this tea that we are pulling together, I am partner with you. I am the one who's carrying the load. You're doing nothing. I don't want anything from you. I don't need anything from you. I just want you to submit to my plan and trust that I can lead your life and I can love you and I can carry things for you. Come, take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light and you will find rest for your souls. He didn't say you will find rest for your bodies. The bodies will still be fasting, praying, sick, suffering, difficult circumstances. But the soul inside, free from all burdens, free from sin, free, free from like love of others, free from the love of people, free from everything, you will find rest for your souls. Our bridegroom is coming to give us rest. It says, carry your, my cross. What can I carry? Didn't you come to carry our cross? Yes, Habibi. I don't want you to carry anything. I want you to submit to whatever I put in your life because this will cleanse your soul. Submit to me. This is the meaning of the cross. Now, if we tell people like, carry your cross, it's a heavy word. Heavy word. It's not an easy word. It's not a nice word. The worst thing in my life, I say, this is my cross. No, it's not. But every single thing that God puts in my life, is fellowship of his suffering that's bringing resurrection. Takes me to the cross. Joining the
the cross of Christ. Say, you who loved me and paid this price for me. Remember the old people, get those and tetas. You go and tell Teta, my cousin cursed me. Why not the Habibi? Jesus was cursed also. That's not what I want to hear. But that was actually brilliant. Connecting my pain to the cross of Christ. Say, wow. Was it that painful, Jesus? And you did that for me? Yes, for you. I love you. A love that wants to break you from all your burdens. Not to give you temporary relief of the pain that you're going through. Not make your life easy. But make you fly. Above everything in this world. Detaching from people. People bothering you? I will give you detachment from people. Come join my cross. I was lonely on the cross. No one was around me. Closest people to me betrayed me and denied me. Come join that. Once I accept that mystically, in a mysterious way, I join the cross of Christ and I find rest right there. I promise you, so many times some people come very heavy from the burden of life and the burden of people and once we connect this pain what they're going through to the cross of Christ they get relief right away right away but apart from this cross from this love then everything it's confusing. I'm not even aware of God's love for me. Whatever is going on in our lives these days, we want to say, I am loved. I am loved. I am cherished. And this blood is the stamp of this love. This is not an earthly love. The spiritual love heavenly love, holy love that will break me from all my ties, will make me fly, will make me swim in that ocean of the love of God. And the sign of joining that ocean, again, as I said in the beginning, I myself become an ocean. And everything I have is not for me, it's for others. I live no longer for myself, but for others. And that would be the perfect image of Christ that he wants to give the world through you. I pray that we join the crucified Lord today. Say, Lord, I know that I am loved. Lord, I believe in my deepest pain and confusion and any nonsense that is going on in my life, I believe that this is your love. Stamp it with your blood for the salvation of my soul to make me a new creation, to make me heavenly, to make me spiritual, to make me Go beyond the here and now and the, and the tiredness and the people and all of this. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Glory be to God.